Good evening. Thanks for joining us for News 4 at 11. I'm Drew Wilder. We have new information tonight on that sonic boom that rattled the D.C. region as fighter jets scrambled to track an unresponsive private plane flying in D.C.'s no-fly zone. At about 3 o'clock this afternoon, the sonic boom from the F-16 fighter jets could be heard from Fredericksburg up to Annapolis. A senior government official tells NBC News National Guard pilots were tracking the private Cessna Citation jet and determined the pilot was incapacitated. They followed the plane until it crashed into a mountainous area in southwest Virginia. News 4's Mauricio Casillas joins us tonight live from the live desk with brand new information about the occupants inside that private jet, Mauricio. Yeah, Drew, NBC News reports that the Cessna citation belongs to John Rumpel from Melbourne, Florida. NBC News is reporting Rumpel says his daughter, granddaughter, nanny, and their pilot were all on board. And just within the last hour, we received word from Virginia State Police that rescue crews made it to that crash site, crash site on foot where they found no survivors. And tonight, only on four, we're also getting that brand new video of the fiery scene. Chopper 4 captured this video you'll only see on News 4 of the private plane's crash site in the George Washington National Forest in Nelson County, Virginia. A defense official tells NBC News NORAD F-16s scrambled to intercept a Cessna Citation jet. Multiple government official sources say the pilot did not respond to air traffic control and flew into restricted DC airspace. NORAD says its fighter jets shadowed the jet but didn't shoot down the plane. Those government official sources say the pilot of the private jet was incapacitated in midair and says fighter jets followed the plane until it crashed. The fighter jets from DC National Guard's Capitol Guardians causing a sonic boom heard all across our region, rattling those who heard it. Man, it was it was very loud where I was living. One of those who heard it was NBC News aviation analyst Jeff Gazzetti from his Northern Virginia home. There's a lot of circumstances about this particular accident that are very odd. Uh, first of all, why the 180 degree turn once it reaches New York City? This is the flight path for the Cessna Citation. It took off in Tennessee, flew over central Long Island, quickly turned around, and then began flying on a southwest path directly over Washington, D.C., and through Virginia before ultimately crashing. It's not clear why the pilot was unresponsive, but Gazzetti says it could be due to cabin pressure problems. It's reminiscent of uh, some sort of uh, mechanical malfunction with the pressurization of the aircraft, which would lead the occupants to become incapacitated because of a lack of oxygen. The loud boom from the fighter jets causing confusion and safety concerns in the district. The U.S. Capitol Police releasing this statement, which reads in part, quote, Our officials were working closely with our federal partners to monitor an unresponsive pilot who was flying an airplane near the National Capital region. The U.S. Capitol complex was briefly placed on an elevated alert until the airplane left the area, end quote. As for the private jet, it could be a while before we learn what went wrong. Hopefully, the uh, flight recorders will be intact and the investigators will be able to piece together all the odd circumstances that led to this accident. The National Transportation Safety Board is now leading this investigation. And again, just before we came on the air, Virginia State Police confirming that there were no survivors. Drew? Yeah, so sad. M Mauricio, we're talking about a Cessna, what's called a citation plane. I think when most of us hear Cessna, we think of that kind of small, single prop engine plane. This was a little bit bigger. This is a jet, like a private jet. But still, it's a small private jet. Do we have any word from the military why they thought it was necessary to scramble F-16s here? Well, Drew, that's information that we're still working to confirm. We have yet to hear from the Department of Defense. But when you think about the fact that this plane was supposed to land in Long Island, New York, then it does that 180, heads southwest toward D.C., all while the pilot is unresponsive, there's definitely cause for concern. A U.S. official calling the flight path unusual. And the airspace around D.C., as we know, is more restricted than any other part of the country, and pilots have to be in direct contact with air traffic control. A senior government official did tell NBC News that the Cessna ceased radio contact at 2 p.m., and that's when the FAA alerted an ongoing security conference call that included the military and the Department of Homeland Security, and then that is when the fighter jets were scrambled. Drew? All right, Mauricio, good information. Thank you so much. Now, we want to give you a better sense of the crash site now that rescuers have located the plane's wreckage. Here are more of our exclusive images from our Brad Freitas as he describes the scene from Chopper 4. 
in a debris field roughly the size of a football field near Mine Bank Mountain, about 20 miles south of Staunton, Virginia. Several small fires were still burning when Chopper 4 got overhead, more than four hours after the Cessna Citation business jet dropped off radar. Flight tracking shows the plane made a rapid descent around 3.23 p.m. on Sunday after departing from Tennessee and making it as far as Long Island, New York, before turning back and ultimately traveling directly through Washington, D.C. airspace. The location of the crash so remote, a Virginia State Police helicopter was used to find it before crews could navigate the terrain. From high above the George Washington National Forest, Brad Freitas, News 4. All right, so all this talk about a sonic boom, what exactly causes a sonic boom. What is it? Many of you probably heard it today. You know it's loud. Sounds maybe similar to thunder. But according to NASA, this is what happens when an object flies faster than the speed of sound or flies supersonic. That speed, by the way, is about 750 miles per hour right here at sea level. Now, BBC Science Focus explains that when a plane or another aircraft is flying below the speed of sound, there are invisible sound waves that spread out in front and behind the plane. You can kind of think of this like the waves that are created behind a boat as it's moving through water, right? The wake. Well, scientists say that when the plane accelerates past the speed of sound, these sound waves can't travel fast enough to get out of the plane's way. And that causes the waves to combine and that creates a shock wave resulting in a sonic boom. According to Science Focus, sonic booms actually happen all the time, but for us here on the ground, we can only hear it when one passes right over us. And that is exactly what we saw and what many of us heard today. Yet there are still so many questions remaining tonight from the timeline of events to what happened on board that jet. News 4 will be working throughout the night for updates. Join Jumi, Tony, and the entire News 4 Today team starting at 4 a.m. They will have the very latest information.